So we've got some customization of our project at the moment, the color scheme. I want to talk about changing the font and then other CSS things. So to change the font, we're going to use this trick that we would do for websites. We can use the at font face CSS property to change fonts. Uh, so at font face. Uh, there's lots of do documentation about it, but I'm going to show you a very specific place where we're going to look this up. Uh, so at font face, it's a CSS3 construct. So it wouldn't work on older browsers or older devices, but that's okay. We've, I guess we've even got fontface.com, an up upcoming service. No, it's been around for a while now. But um, at fontface basically allows us to use any font we want. In the old days, we would select uh, a font, and if the font was available, on the user's device, then that font would load in the website or app. So if we know what fonts are in the particular device, we can load that font. Well, that's not a very good way to rely on things because Android is open source and it can be changed and fonts can be added and removed by the manufacturers. So there's a better way, which is to use add font face, which is that we bundle the font with the app and then we can load up any font we want because it's in the app. So one, one place that I like to do that from is, well, first of all, I want to get a font that I can legally use on my project. Because just like images, just because you find any image with a Google search does not mean you can use it for your purposes does not mean you can put it on your website or in your app or whatever. Just because you can find a million images of cats doesn't mean you can use them on your cat app. You really need to use uh, images that are legal for your purposes. And same thing for fonts, actually. We may take fonts so much for granted. I've got 200 of them, 400 of them on my computer. But you've got those on your computer because you've paid for your computer and the manufacturer has paid a license to have those fonts on your computer. So technically, if you don't have the license to use that font in a, in a, um, in a commercial purpose, technically you shouldn't be using that font. So what we're going to do is use a different font for our project. And again, I could look up Google search, cool fonts, computer fonts, crazy fonts, interesting fonts, and I'll find a million results. But probably not legitimate for you to use. The fonts also cost money. They can be $5, they can be $500, they can be $5,000. You can buy fonts that are more expensive than your computer. And so the big, big companies, they do that. But I'll show you this great website that works well for our project as well as any other web project. Let's go to fontsquirrel.com. You're not going to find a million fonts here, but you're going to find 100% free for commercial use fonts. Fonts that are great for my app, especially if my app is going to be sold, 99 cents or whatever, or my app is going to have a commercial purpose. Maybe my app is free, but it's the online storefront for my company, and that's a commercial purpose. So again, it's better to be safe than sorry, to use stock images or free images or public domain images and such. Same thing with fonts. You never know. That amazing font that you did a search for could have been a commercial font where the developers want $200 to use the font. Well, you use it without that permission. You say, okay, great, I'll pay you $200. No, now for that violation, you're going to pay $2,000 in court. So, better safe than sorry. Here, we're going to use 100% free for commercial use. So here's a few that are up here right away. Intro, Rust, Questa, Corbett, Corbett, Alex Brush, and so forth. And then on the right side, we can look at them in order of, let's say, show me all fonts that are retro. Only 35 of them, but again, this is better than finding fonts, or using fonts, that is, that are not legitimate for you to use. So Airstream, kind of cool, Day Poster, Deftones. F 
fonts like colors bring up the issue of well I'm more comfortable as a programmer than as a graphic designer so I like for example fancy pants it'll look great in my app but it'll look terrible as regular body text remember we've got the P tag for the body text we've got the H1 tag for headings and such most of the fonts that we're gonna see here will work best for the headings H1, H2, H4, whatever they're not gonna work very well especially if they're very ornamental for the body and I believe we can click on a font and then, yeah that's that's what we want if you click on the name of a font it'll show it to you in different ways here's how they would look as headings and here's how they would look as P's that's hard to read but it looks nice as a heading so one thing about graphic design is you can use as many fonts as you want don't use as many fonts as you want limit it to two maybe three for your whole project two is good one crazy interesting font for the display elements the heading one the heading two etc one crazy font and then one relatively plain but maybe interesting looking font for the body and notice it's divided exactly like that display fonts those are the ones that are that look nice that look nice for a big heading one tags and such and then we've got sans serif which is a, a term that I would use for the body text sans serif are fonts that don't have extra ornamentation like this one arg and abz and afta there's a letter a the letter a the letter a compare that with a serif font look at this letter a right here it has this little ornamentation at the top and down here at the base uh, allegria also down at the base look at this letter L that could have been very simple like this letter L so these two right here are examples of a serif font and a sans serif font serifs are those little ornamentations look at the letter A the letter L the letter R they've got those extra flourishes look at the G it's got a little flourish those are the serifs sans serif sans is French for I think not or without without serifs exactly here there's no extra ornamentation on the letters it doesn't quite count but there's nothing on the L or the A compared to that so serif fonts sans serif fonts so for example Airstream looks amazing I want to use that for my app but if I click on it to view the body to copy that's hard to read too many serifs too much ornamentation but for the top of the name of my app that's great Now, Font Squirrel gives you a few hundred fonts to work with. I'll show you how to add them to our app in a moment. So you take a moment, find two fonts that you like. One crazy interesting display font, and one a little bit more plain, readable, sans serif font. Uh, you don't have to stay within the particular categories here, but I'm just telling you, calligraphic most likely will work great as a as a um, display font when I see here it's adding too many filters uh, on the right here it's showing me way too many things uh, you might want to remove some of these filters here if you've added more than one I was trying to look at calligraphic and it was showing me all of these that I had searched for calligraphic so that's what I'm looking at so Bispo and calligraffiti and Chantelli and Filippa Flor Florent Flor Florante gondola those will look good as the nice big name of my app at the top or maybe some headings within the body text but not very readable as body so find two fonts that you like, and then when you find them, you should have a button that says download. It's either going to say download TTF, 
or download OTF. If the link says something like download external, it's going to go to some other website. For the moment, avoid those. Just try to find two fonts within Font Squirrel, either a TTF version or OTF version, and then download them. And I'll show you what we're going to do with them in a moment. So let me give you a couple seconds left. I downloaded two, one called Airstream, that'll be my heading font, and one called Bitter, that'll be my regular paragraph font. So I'm going to download them both, and then I'm going to extract both. So once you get both of those zip files, extract the folders. So I downloaded those two zips, and then I extracted them, Airstream and Bitter. What I'm going to do then is, inside Airstream folder, for example, I have the one TTF file, the true type font file, and then a license. Inside of Bitter, I've got, well, I've got a bold version, and a bold italic version, an italic version, and a regular version. So some of them are going to give you variations on, on a font, and some are just going to be one. Anyway, make sure you've extracted these, and each has a license which you can uh, you know, read if you'd like. But those are the two fonts I'm going to use. And Font Squirrel, a few years ago, they had a very cool feature. They had to remove it, unfortunately, because of various copyright issues. But what Font Squirrel used to have right built in to the, to the font, they would have download the font face font pack they would give you this zip file that would have the zip that would have the fonts ready to go and the code now what we have to do is find the font download the font and then generate the code it used to have it all in one big zip they have to take that away so we've downloaded our fonts we've extracted them let's go back to font squirrel and click generator at the top here This is the web font generator. Um, click to upload the fonts. I'm going to start with my, my crazier looking font first so that it's obvious, which in my case is Airstream. I'm going to open that one. So I'm going to go back to Airstream. I'm going to select my Airstream TTF file, not in the zip file, in the extracted, in the extracted folder. So I will select Air, Airstream.ttf and then open. If yours has more than one version, the bold and the italics and so forth, you can select them all if you want 
or just for the moment select the regular version if you've got one that says regular. And then I will open. It's going to upload it. my case for some reason my Airstream font is corrupted so I'm just gonna download another one so I can move on All right, that one worked so I'm using a font called 20 20 DB regular I've uploaded it font squirrel tells me it has 175 glyphs which are just basically the different characters letters of the alphabet, the numbers, the symbols, all of that. 20 kilobytes. So then we've got how do we how do you want to convert this? Basic, optimal, and expert. Optimal will be fine. It will convert the font uh, to and give us good performance and speed and so forth. So I'll leave optimal alone. And then the agreement. Yes, so the fonts I'm uploading are legally eligible for web embedding. They are, because I'm getting them from font squirrel themselves. So I'll select yes, download your kit. This is going to give me another zip file. And since we're all doing this at once, we might be slowing it down, but it's going to give me another zip file. Inside the zip file, we have a sample CSS file, which we'll look at. And then we've got several different versions of the font. There's the TTF version again, which will work on some devices. Then we've got an EOT version, which works on other devices, an SVG version, which works on others, and then a WAF and a WAF2 version. So Font Squirrel converted our font to be compatible with as many devices as possible. And an example CSS file how to use it. This specimen folder we don't need to worry about. And the generator, uh, we don't need to worry about that either. So the zip file that it gave me, I need to I need to extract uh, a few files. into my project. So I'm going to go back to my project on my flash drive and because I'm gonna have a bunch of files and I might clutter up my structure a little bit I'm actually going to create a folder for fonts in my project. So let me load this up in your in your project folder my SDCE www I'm going to create a new folder in here called Fonts. My project is going to have a brand new Fonts folder. So any fonts that I'm creating via Font Squirrel and such, uh, I'm going to put inside of this folder. So in the Fonts folder of my project folder in WW, 
I'm going to drag over uh, I'm going to drag over the the EOT SVG TTF WAF WAF2 and the style sheet CSS file. I'm going to drag those over into my font folder in my project folder. <coughs> So I have the different versions of the of the font and a style sheet for me to use it in my project. I'm actually going to rename that style sheet because I'm going to lose track what's in the style sheet. I'm going to call this font style sheet. It's optional, of course, but I'm going to call the style sheet inside of the fonts folder font style sheet .css. I will go back to my index file. I'll go back to my index file and I need to reference that style sheet file. So we can add it. I'm going to say to add it on line 25 uh, before the codica.extra.css Remember we put this inside a font folder. So line 25 we've got a link to a style sheet. The href is pointing to the font folder which is font, slash, the name of the CSS file, which is font style sheet, I believe. Yes, font style sheet dot CSS. There's my line 25 in my index file. Once I add that, well, I'm going to look at my font style sheet.css file. Uh, go ahead and open font style.css in your uh, in Notepad. So the file says it was generated at font scroll, just to remind you. And then there's one line at font face. Open, cl close, curly brace. This is not a class it's not an ID it's a it's a special entity I believe it's called a media query and it's saying okay font face we're gonna use a font called 20 DB regular 20 DB regular is then defined its source is defined in several ways we're either gonna use on first choice the 20 DB web font EOT file semicolon if the device can't handle that version of the font Okay, next item. Instead, try using the EOT version with the Internet Explorer fix. If that doesn't work, come. Try then the WAF2 version. If that doesn't work, try the WAF1 or the TTF or the SVG version. So we're covering all the bases here to use that font, to activate that font. Font weight is normal, font style is normal. So in a sense here, we're activating this font. In my case, 20 dB regular. We're activating for usage. I haven't actually, however, applied it to anything. So just to see if this works, at the very end, after line 16, I'll write heading 1, open curly brace, close curly brace. And I'm going to copy line 6 and paste it into line 19. I'm taking that reference here. I'm saying, OK. Heading 1, use the font family, 20 dB regular. 20 dB regular is defined up here. That should be it. Let's save your index file. Let's save the CSS file. Maybe take a quick look at it in the web browser. 
and then we'll load it up in the in the device. All right, did that work for anyone? Yes, it did. Okay, good. Anyone else? A couple of people? Okay. It's missing something on mine. Fonts. Hmm. It's always the little things. Fonts. Yes, thank you. Yeah, there we go. So, uh, yeah, if you wrote exactly what I wrote, sorry about that, I wrote font slash and then the file. It was, we called the folder fonts. So now if I take a quick look at it in the web browser, there's, there's my new font there. Well, actually, I was changing it. Um, there it is. So there it is at the top. Remember the project has an, a heading has a heading one at the very top there, and then this one down here would be heading two, heading three, and then heading four on our footer. So what we could do if it worked, uh, re refine this a little bit to say all of my headings I want them to be this font. So one trick that we can do is we can do heading one comma heading two comma heading three comma heading four. Now we're saying all four of those headings will use this new font. Since if we only said heading one, then only heading one will have the font. But separating them with commas, now we say do it to this and this and this and this. There it is. So there's my font up on heading one. There it is in heading two. There's no heading three, but then there's heading four. Right, so did this work for people? Since our dir file is a separate file, then it doesn't get applied there yet. So again, this goes back to the pros and cons of having a separate um, file. The index file has 99% of our app, then the dir file has the map. Uh, one con of this method, notice, is we have to kind of do this double. We do something on index and we have to remember to also do it on dir. 
so that's not a big not a big problem all I have to do into the dir file is add the same style sheet reference so I'm going to copy it because I know it works on my index file and I'm going to add it to my dir file I'm going to add it on line 21 And now my directions also have the new fonts. This has been set up to for the display fonts, the heading ones and so forth. I have that other simpler font um, for my actual body text. Right now I've got a very basic sans serif, but if I want it to look a little more interesting, I downloaded that other font called Bitter. I'd have to go through the same process. I'd have to re-upload it to Font Squirrel. It'll give me the font kit. I download it and I put it in my folder, and then I would... Uh, a little time saver that kit would be would have a, another font st style sheet CSS file I uh, should be able to add another copy of that and the one that it gives me from my other one called bitter uh, obviously don't do this but it would give me the code for the other font I would add it in here and it would activate bitter 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 and then I can use bitter for my uh, for my paragraphs, for example, it would be P, it would be font face bitter. It's a little bit of setup, but I'll try that in a moment. But that's the concept. I'm using Font Squirrel to find the font, to generate the, the, the code for me, and I attach the code to my project and add the re requisite files, and then I, I have a brand new font. I'm not dependent on the fonts that are available on the device. These are, they come with the app, and they're also then, uh, they take up a little bit more resources instead of the basic fonts built in. How much? Well, uh, I don't believe very, very much because it comes built in, it's compressed, it's part of the project. It's just a font, it's, uh, it's not like a big graphic. Uh, how, ma how many resources that's found in the font squirrel right here remember right now this is about 20 kilobytes extra added to my project well if I select the basic version it would have less glyphs and less fonts and then an expert I can go in and say well don't do this don't do that compress it this way very complex and compress my project even more my fonts, that is. What you could also do, notice here I uploaded my 20 dB version of the font and my bitter font. I downloaded both of them and that will then put them both together into one kit. That might be a better way than creating separate kits for them. Yeah, that way it writes it for me, but hindsight is twenty twenty.
So here it is that I uploaded both my display font and my paragraph font. And it's just, as I said a moment ago, it's just going to write the at font face for me. There's bitter regular web font, bitter regular WAF, etc. And then I, it's just up to me at the end here to then define the paragraph. and its font family. there. So it's not the plain Arial sans serif type of font. It's got a little bit of extra ornamentation with a different kind of font. Some of the fonts still didn't quite obey, like in the in the in the nav bar up there. Those are governed by more CSS than just the basic um, than just the basic code that that I wrote. So uh, we're going to end a little bit early, just 10 minutes than the usual, because um, it would be better to start with the next topic with a, with a, full, with a full day, because I want to talk about some of this other styling that I want to deal with, such as, well, there's a little too much space here. How do I figure out how much space there is, and more importantly, how do I edit that? Maybe tighten up some of these heights and widths and that sort of thing. That's going to be, again, via CSS. And we're going to um, start with a clean slate next time because it can be it can be um, pretty uh, involved to edit some of these things. jQuery Mobile is great because you have the starting point that really gets you off running really fast. But then there's going to be these little things, these little rough around the edges things, perhaps, or these little things that bother my OCD that I want to fix that. And unfortunately, it's not as direct as you might think. It's going to require CSS. It's going to require a little bit of sleuthing with the element inspector and uh, figuring out exactly what to change. Maybe I want more space up on the header up here. Maybe I want less space here. Maybe these uh, fonts are not big enough and the line heights and all of that stuff. So we'll end at this point and when we come back we will then get into more detail about fully customizing the app a little bit more and then go on. Any general questions? Yes? It is, and that'll be part of what we'll talk about next time, because what we would need to do is sort of dissect what is jQuery Mobile giving us. Once we know that, then we can apply what we want, but that's going to require dissecting the existing jQuery Mobile code. So we'll end at this point, and when we come back next time, we'll keep customizing through CSS.